yesterday we start with the uh, with the beginning of the story of lean six sigma uh, we said there is a sigma is coming from uh, motorella and lean is coming from uh, toyota and we had this guy paul galvin and paul galvin he sent a technical committee uh, to japan to learn uh, and study uh, the japanese uh, technology about uh, manufacturing so this this committee is coming with uh, uh, such a something need to do uh, immediately in uh, in Mutuella. So this bunch of things, there is internet defect and there is a rework and uh, there is uh, some defect and customers start to walk away. Uh, there is no satisfaction. Uh, customer is screaming loudly. And then they came up with the uh, uh, methodology of uh, problem solving and uh, there is a five phases or five steps of the uh, of the solving the problem we uh, we call it the mac d for define m for measure a for analyze and i improve c for uh, control and there is a three uh, or four uh, principle of lean uh, management we said there is a ball uh, and there is uh, one piece flow, tact, and zero defect. And uh, we said there is uh, uh, many types of, uh, of waste. And we, we said there is a uh, eight type of waste, including in the team wood. So there is a transport, inventory, motion, waiting, overproduction, overprocessing, uh, defect, uh, and skills. This is all type of, uh, of waste. And we said the Lean Sigma has been des uh, designed to eliminate problem and errors and defect and improve working condition and reducing the variation and also removing the waste and efficiency. And we said the main target of, uh, of Lean Six Sigma is to provide better response uh, to the customer. We said there is uh, 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 three elements and each one uh, uh, depends on the other one and they are uh, reinforced each other. We said there is a, a tools and technique and there is a process methodology and also there is a mindset and culture. It has to be adopting before you leave uh, the company. Also, there is a principle of uh, Lean Six Sigma. We said that is the uh, Six Sigma focusing on the real world uh, production problem and also effective tools to analyze the team uh, problems and team forming. Also, we said this process focusing on analyze, database analysis, impact of process uh, for the Six Sigma, and dealing with the root cause, and finally applying the control uh, system. And also we talked there is a, a benefit of Lean Six Sigma, there is organizational benefit, and there is a personal uh, benefit and also there is a benefit for industries and jobs that applying uh, Six Sigma. Uh, and we go through, there is uh, six built, but uh, it's five built because the uh, why it built is uh, just you can Google, uh, watch YouTube and then you will become white built. But basically it's it starts from yellow, green, uh, black, a master black and champion and we will go details during this course uh, to talk about each one of them uh, this is a damac and uh, we said there is a tools and techniques there is a process uh, analyzing tools uh, that is a visual analyzing tools also and statically statistical analysis and there is a project team management uh, and this is tools and we will go through this uh, course by details and um, there's the expected result we said uh, after you are blowing six sigma in your company the improvement of the customer satisfaction are reducing production cycle increasing productivity reducing total defect reducing ideal business and determining uh, which is uh, non-value added to be removed from the process uh, finally we came to the uh, six laws of uh, six sigma so today we will start by the first law of Six Sigma. And this law, it's called uh, 
and it's called the mechanism for dealing with the with the problem. So how we are dealing with the problem in the Six Sigma concept. This uh, this law in front of us, the Y, we call it the bigger Y. And the Y it is the problem you are facing. Why it is the reason, the main reason for you present in the, in the company, why you are in the company why you are coming to this company uh, to make six sigma project just because there is a uh, something called why if there is no why so why you are not welcome in the company if there is no why nobody will call you to make a uh, uh, new process to make a new procedure to uh, to improve the efficiency to uh, to earn uh, customer to protect the company from losing customer, to increase the profit. This is all because this why exists. If it is not exist, you will not longer be uh, in this company. So why? This is the original problem, which, which you are going to deal with. And also it is called the output of the main process. So the output of the main process, it has to be Y. Y refer to the real problem that you are facing and that you are coming to, to eliminate. So Y, in the Six Sigma perspective, we call it the bigger Y. And we call it also, it is the output of the, of the process or the final product, final product of your, uh, of your project. When you come, was as we said yesterday, when you come to the to the to the company, you will make an evaluation and you will calculate the current uh, uh, six uh, sigma level. Suppose we are in the two level, so you have to move us to the six or to the five. It depends on the on the management need and and requirement. So basically, we need to move to the six. So moving to the six, that means you are uh, solving why you are getting the why solved. So this is the final product of your of your project. X, it is referred to the the root cause of the problem. So each problem, as many of us we know, each problem there is a reason behind that problem. There is no any existing of the problem until. Uh, uh, there is a reason behind that uh, problem. So the potential cause combining with each other. So uh, this is, uh, we call it also uh, the original, uh, I mean, like finding the original cause uh, behind the problem. This is, we call it X, okay? Uh, X represents the main process output. Here we said this is the input. Uh, sorry, this is output and uh, uh, X, it's an uh, input. So the input is about X and the output is about uh, Y. So in, in, six, in six Sigma uh, methodology, we will teach you how to solve and how to find even before you solve, how to find the root cause for, for the problem. And the whole, and the whole, uh, this training it will be about uh, uh, when when we reach the uh, uh, the major phase. In the major phase, you have to find the axis. So once you find the axis in the improved phase, you have to find the solution for the axis and implement it. So once you implement it, you get why uh, solve it. In the control, you will control uh, the why. So you will. Uh, protect uh, Y from happening again. That means you will protect the axis from happening again. So you have the root cause, you will deal with the root cause, you will eliminate the root cause, and in the end, uh, that means you are already solving the problem and getting uh, Y. If it's about the relation between them, each problem definitely has a relation with the root cause. So the, 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 the relation between the uh, root cause and the problem, we call it, uh, we call it F. And definitely, once you find the axis or the X, 
when you work on the x and eliminate the x by default you will get the y and by default the relation between them it will be changed which is the f so here don't bother yourself about y don't bother yourself about, about f just you need to work on x done when you done the x find the x uh, means find the root cause what is the what is the what is the what is the root cause define it and try to solve it as much as you could so once you solve it and once you fix it that means by uh, immediately you will get uh, y uh, solve it and if uh, sure this is a relation between them so this is this is basically what means by y equal uh, equal f so let us get uh, example for that one so it will be clear uh, for example we have poor performance of uh, an employee okay you have an employee many of you you have employee in his department there is an employee and and his uh, performance is, is very poor uh, since there is a two or three managers uh, sales managers here let us take from the sales and there is a one sales here okay for example uh, you have a sales uh, salesman his target is one his target is one million per month but unfortunately he get only 200 or uh, let's see 300 only within that month this is a consider as a boost poor, uh, poor performance so the issue is the poor performance poor performance is the y y means poor performance so what is the x x is the is the road cause behind this poor perform why he is getting is collecting only uh, 200000 not 1 million okay the, the the easiest way to deal with this uh, with this man or this salesman it's termination we ask you to collect 1 million you only collect to, uh, to uh, 200000 so that means you are not welcome anymore in our company. Go to the finance, take your service award, and bye bye. This is a very easy way to do it. But in Six Sigma, we told you no. This is okay, easiest way, but it's not it's not the right way. You have to sit with him and ask him why you are not able to achieve one million collection per the month. So when you have interviewed this uh, this employee, he told you, "I have very bad car, and this car stopped more than one time during my day. I'm visiting one customer uh, uh, per day, per day, and instead of visiting six or seven customer per day. So because of my car." I cannot visit more than one customer per day because always my car is getting stuck. Uh, whatever is uh, flat tire, uh, engine uh, problem, whatever. So I have very bad uh, car. Okay. And uh, this is a problem he faced. So what is you are recommending, guys? We will, we will terminate this guy. All we will work with the X. And where is the X here? X is the root cause. What is the root cause? It car problem. So in Six Sigma, we will teach you don't go for uh, the easiest way. Go for the analyze. Define the problem. Measure the problem. What is the effect and the impact of the problem? The impact of this problem is instead of collecting 1 million, he's collecting. 200,000, this is the impact. This is, we'll find it in the major, uh, in the major phase. Okay, uh, what, is the, what is the root cause for, for this poor uh, collection? His car, his car is very bad. So in the improve, we told you what is the solution for this problem? The solution is to get him a new car so he can go and visit uh, five, six, seven customer bill there and he can collect 1 million. Okay. So, yeah, car to, car to be replaced, very good. So we can replace his car 
and get him a new car. So once you get a new car, now he is able to visit five to seven customers per day. So what is the impact of this visit? The impact of this visit, the collection, instead of 200, it will reach to million, one million or me, or uh, maybe it will go more than one million. So this is the mass, uh, methodology of Six Sigma with the dealing with the problem. Don't deal with the problem direct. Forget the problem for the, for the time being. Go for the root cause. Try as much as you could to solve the root cause. Maybe there is a one or two or three root cause for one problem. So go one by one, okay? And, uh, and uh, later on, we will tell you how to even, you have, uh, for example, uh, two or three root cause, and you have two or three, uh, 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 I mean, like a solution for this cause which solution you will you will take so later on we will teach you more technique about which solution you will take so now you have we have this example just to to give you a, a little idea about about this uh, law and about the total uh, methodology of dealing with the problem so don't deal with the y just go for dealing with the x once you solve the x when you replace the car, that means you solve the X and immediately Y has been uh, has been solved. So this is this is one example of the uh, of this law. Okay, let's go. Uh, we have the law number two. We call it uh, is uh, standardization metrics. What means standardization metrics? Mean uh, there is an international standard used as a general standard for measuring operation process. Okay, what that means. This is HR. Okay, guys. And we have here the sales. Can we compare HR with the sales? And in the end of the day, we can calculate which one of them is the better. It is very difficult because they are doing uh, different different uh, uh, jobs. So you cannot compare the sales with HR because HR is dealing with the contract, he is dealing with the government, uh, he is dealing with the legal legal bodies. Sales is dealing with the customer. He is selling product and getting money. So there is no any uh, any point or sharing point between them. You can. Uh, you can uh, evaluate, okay? It is very difficult. And all of us, we know that. But here is the dangerous about Six Sigma. When you use Six Sigma, you can compare between, not even department, you can compare between the managers, you can compare between branches, you can compare between uh, 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 total companies, if you have a group of companies. This is a very dangerous use of Six Sigma. This is what we call the standard, uh, general standard for uh, measuring process. So if you apply Six Sigma on HR, for example, we will take a response to the customer, okay? By the way, Tomorrow or the after tomorrow, we will we will uh, we will uh, know there is a two type of customer. There is an external customer and there is an internal customer. But let me give you a hint about this one. Internal customer, uh, this is this is within your company, inside your company. HR. There is a, a IT employee. IT employee is considered as a customer for HR because he is getting uh, his salary, he is getting his contract, he is getting his. Uh, come renewed from HR. So he is a, he is a customer for HR. Okay, there is internal customer, external customer for the sales, for example, someone come from outside from the company and he is buying from you. This is what we call external uh, customer. So we can get one problem or one standard uh, issue and we apply it to HR and we apply it to the sales. We will take, for example, as we mentioned, 
response to the customer, okay? This response to the customer, no matter what is the customer, internal or external, okay? We will apply it for HR. And then we will calculate the Six Sigma level. What's Six Sigma level in this problem? Get the Six Sigma level for HR. For example, two. We will apply the same response to the customer. The sales is having internal and external customer. Internal customer accounting. Accounting, they will ask you for the collection. This is internal customer. Your external customer will ask you for the delivering for the product. This is external customer. We will apply response to the customer on sales, response to the customer on HR. We will calculate at the end of the day what is the score or the, what is the level of Six Sigma for the HR and the level of Six Sigma to uh, sales, for example, they get three. The next example, they will give us the answer. So C is a, is a purchasing. The purchasing, they get two Six Sigma for applying uh, response to the customer. Okay, operation P, B they get six. Okay, HRA, A they get three, six sigma level. Which one of them is better, guys? Come on, guys, I need to hear your voice. Okay, chatting, good. B, yes. So B is a better because B is a six sigma, six sigma level, which is a higher, and C, uh, which is a purchasing two six sigma, and HR they only get three six sigma. So this is a very dangerous uh, extra, uh, standardization metrics or standardization uh, for uh, comparing the six sigma. So this is a way, and this is one of the benefit you can use it within your organization uh, to apply, or after you apply Six Sigma, it will give you a tool, this is a new tool. So you don't have this tool before, you cannot compare HR with the finance, you cannot compare IT with the sales. But now you have uh, Six Sigma, you can compare which one is the better. Take one, one, one problem, take one, uh, one sample, apply, to the all department and in the end of the day you will get the the calculation which one six uh, six sigma level and then you can uh, you can easily uh, combine between them and you can easily get which one uh, is a better and uh, give give them reward if you have uh, if you find uh, the good one okay guys so here we have we have this example for the airline company, okay? This is the airline company. Now we are coming in this, uh, in this uh, company, okay? This is for, for the first time. We are a team for Six Sigma team, and we are coming to this airline company. So the first thing what we will do is calculating which Six Sigma levels they have, okay? So let us start. What is the issue? What is the uh, three categories we are going to, uh, to choose in, or, in order to, to, to solve it? They told us we have three problems, three major problems, and we need to, to get it solved. One of them is uh, packaging and handling, application uh, process, response time. Okay, this is the three. So we need to find a solution for this three problem. We need to work on the process and the procedure for this problem until we, we get the uh, satisfaction uh, point. And we need to increase the sigma, sigma, six sigma level from whatever the current to the six sigma level. Okay. When we go inside the company and we start making uh, uh, interviews with the uh, uh, with the employees, when we start to see for for the system they have uh, they have internal system using, we find out there is a three thousand six hundred sixty uh, bags, okay, going for the wrong passenger, okay, passenger with the uh, misplaced the uh, luggage, or there is a 
3000 plus uh, 3660 bag is going for the wrong passenger so this is this is this is the issue so what about the application process we found there is a 770 error inside the application and this is need to be correct so how many application process uh, error 7070 uh, error every day require a correction so this is every day 7770 7, need to be correct what about the response time they have a standard uh, and stand like a standard response so each call it has not exceed two minutes each call the customer is calling so his waiting time should not be exceed the two minutes so what we found we found there is a 257 call has been exceeded more than two minutes uh, waiting for the customer so this is this is one uh, one issue okay we took all these numbers okay guys and we go to uh, six sigma calculator this is here we will take you just sample but later on we will use the six sigma uh, calculation and you will get this number you will get this number this number it will come from uh, we call it mini tab this is in the green not in the build so in the green build uh, not in the yellow sorry in the green build you will find uh, there is a something called mini tab you will work on the mini tab and you will get all this number but here we will uh, we will give you the basics of this number what this numbers mean and what is the related between this number and the six sigma uh, six sigma level okay guys so this is this is the situation we found when you go to the first time when you enter the company and we make your interview and you you you're gathering and collecting the data you found there is a miss uh misplaced luggage for the bucket handling we found there is uh, many errors in the application processing and we found there is uh, some call exceeding the uh the two minutes uh waiting they have a standard two minutes for each call so there is a uh 275 a uh, call has been exceeded the two minutes. When we enter, this is in the calculation. Just what is a DBMO? DBMO, it's defect beer million opportunity. What means? Means the calculation, it will be on uh, the standard, it will be on million, million opportunities or million chance. Okay. So what they get? what they get according to this numbers according to this calculation there is a 6 uh, 66 and 807 error beer million so in each million process just focus here guys in each million process they have 66807 error or defect this is beer million each million each million they have 66 error or defect okay guys so this is it will lead to 90 percent uh, 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 sorry 93 uh, 0.32000 percent this is from the from 100 so the accuracy for this uh, for this operation is 93 uh percent 93.32000 percent so this is the current situation you are facing right now this is the current uh situation you found the, the company this number this number six uh six thousand this is referred to we will give you the the, the table this is referred to three sigma level once you found this number okay when you put this number all this number you gather you put in the calculation we will come up with this number immediately the calculation will give you the three sigma level so this company with this situation uh, in the first line they are right now on the three sigma three six sigma level up to here 
This is the three six sigma limit. So what you need to do now? Now you need to work on the process. Now you need to work on the procedure. Now you need to do as much as you could to improve this company and move it from six sigma to the four sigma. Okay? You work two months in this company. You work with the employee. There is the employee need training. So you give them training. There is a new, uh, there is a, a current pro process you need to uh, to, to take out or remove the add non value added steps. There is a waiting time. There is a waste for for uh, for inventory. So this is you will do all the process until you get. Uh, I mean, until you move this 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 company from six sigma, uh, three sigma to uh, four sigma. So after two months. After two months working in this company, we reduce the misplaced package from 3,000 to 340 only. Okay. We used to have uh, errors in the application uh, 7,070. Now we have 72 only. So instead of uh, uh, 257 call exceeded the two minutes now we have only 24. instead of uh, 66,000 uh, 0.807 error per million don't forget per million for the million process you have six uh, 66,000 now you have only six thousand and uh, uh, 210 this is this is per million so you used to have 60,000 now you have uh six six thousand plus per million your accuracy uh, accordingly will be improved from from 93 point to 99 point something okay guys this number refer to four sigma level now after you done after you work three months uh, or two months in the company after you make the restructuring for the process restructuring for the procedure a new procedure has been add uh, add non value added has been uh, removed from the from the process and then you get uh, the result of only the total errors the total defect per million is only 6000 plus so this is referred to four six sigma level so what is you will go back to the company are you satisfied no we are not satisfied we need more so you will get more and you will work more another two months. After two months, we found there is only 12. After we've done a new procedure, after we've done restructuring, we get only 12 package or 12 uh, luggage or bags uh, misplaced or uh, go into the wrong uh, uh, passenger. Instead of C, the beginning is 3,000 plus. Now only we have 12. The beginning is 7,070. Now we have only 13 in the application process. Uh, in the response time, we used to have uh, 200 plus. Now we have only five. Five call exceeding the two minutes. Okay. And this is a good job. What is, what is about the DBMO? DBMO, we have 230 only, uh, 230 defect per million. We have a million process. Just we have 230 uh, defect or error from this million uh, process. This is very fantastic. What is about the accuracy? The accuracy accordingly will be changed from 99 uh, point something to the 99 point something. Sure, it's better than before. Okay, this number 230 is referred to five uh, sigma. And by the way, you need to memorize this number because this number it will be asked about in the exam. So 230 defect beer million, that means you are working on a five sigma uh, level. Okay. You done up to here. You back to the management. Are you satisfied with this one? Yes, we are so satisfied and we are so excited uh, to move on. And we need you to move us to the six sigma uh, level, not only five. Okay, guys, we will do it. Again, you will come 
reviewing the process. Again, you will come reviewing the procedure. Again, you will come uh, through structuring the current procedure. And then after we've done all this one, after we're working again, two or three months, we found we have only six misplaced baggage uh, instead of the uh, 3,000 plus in the beginning. So the last time we have 12, now we have uh, six misplaced. Uh, what about the application process? We have 10 only instead of 13 last time. What about the response time? We have only three calls exceeding two minutes instead of uh, five for last time. Now, how many defects you have per million? We have 3.4. And this 3.4, guys, you need to memorize same like your full name same like your wife name you have to memorize 3.4 this is the six sigma 3.4 defect 3.4 error per million you get me guys you are working in this company we are selling to the customer we have how many customer we have and how many delivery we have to this customer Okay, how many invoices we are printing daily? How many invoices we are printing per year? Okay, for example, we have a million, million delivery per, uh, per, per the year, million delivery. We are delivering to the customer million delivery. That means we are invoicing million invoice. How many error and how many wrong delivery happening? and how many uh, uh, wrong uh, uh, invoice we made? Only 3.4 invoices. Can you imagine guys? 3.4 defect per million process. As we said, if you are delivering uh, to million customer or you have million delivery, you have only 3.4 wrong delivery or wrong material has been delivered to the customer. It is wonderful. You cannot imagine if you move your company from six, uh, 66,000 plus error per million to 3.4 uh, defect or error per million. This is very fantastic. And this is uh, outstanding uh, performance. And this is refer to six sigma, as I told you. So this is, you have to memorize same like your name, same like your uh father name and this is the accuracy of the six sigma 99.9966 uh accuracy so the defect per million for the six sigma is 3.3.4 uh, 3 so 3.4 when you found 3.4 dbmo that means this company is working on the six sigma level if someone if you ask someone he told you ask him, what is, uh, how many defects per million you have in your company? He will tell you, we have only 3.4. And just he speak like that and he shut up his mouth. That means six sigma level. Immediately you will realize they are working in six sigma uh, level. So six sigma level, this is for our company. For example, for the, manu uh, for the manufacturing company, okay, uh, for the commercial company, for the hospitals, for uh, hotels, this is 3.4 defect per million. For them is uh, very satisfied. But can we go beyond that? Can we go for, uh, for uh, eight sigma level, nine sigma level, 10 sigma level? Yes, yes, it can be. And there is, there is many industry, industry in this world, they have been reached to 24, sigma level can you imagine the six sigma equal to 3.4 so what about 24 can you imagine guys how many defect per million they will have i will give you one example this 3.4 it will be good for for commercial and manufacturing uh, business but it will not be ideal for some of the manufacturing, for example, Airbus or Boeing. 
imagine in, in each one million uh, aeroplane, they have 3.4 uh, fell down in the ocean. This is a disaster, cannot be, this is not acceptable. Imagine uh, uh, NASA, NASA they are sending, uh, sending, uh, sending what we call them, uh, the scientists for, for, the, for the march. For the march. Yeah, so imagine in, in, in each, in each uh, uh, journey, there is a one, one has been filled down. This is a disaster, they cannot be. So for us, yeah, it's this graph. So for us, as a commercial or as a as a industry business, three point four is very satisfying for us. This is very good. But for some manufacturing, some uh, 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 industries, they cannot be accepted. They need more. So Boeing or Airbus or NASA, they need more. So most of them, NASA, they reach up to twenty four. So NASA, now they are working on a 24 uh, Sigma level. I think Boeing and Airbus, and there is a, there is a one, uh, one company is manufacturing the F, F-16 and F, F-23, F-16. Uh, I'm, I'm not remember the name of the company, but this, this company also they are using uh, up to now, they reach to 24 uh, sigma sigma level. But we are a human. In the end of the day, we are a human. We cannot reach nine hundred uh, percent. So even the 24. So this is this is, this is a different. The difference is very is very uh, very small. This is nine sigma. Nine sigma is 99 percent point nine 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 seven seven. This is accuracy. See the 24, 24, 99 versus 9, 9, 9, how many, 9, 4, 9, and then 7. So this is the gap. This is the, this is the 9, and this is 24. So there is a big gap, but the accuracy is still not reaching the 100%, because this 100% cannot be on human, because our nature, we are doing mistakes. Our nature, nature uh, we, we have a defect in, in our process, because the, uh, the nature of the people, even the awareness and the knowledge of the people uh, level is not the same. So you cannot get the 100% uh, anyway. Okay, guys. So uh, F-16 manufacturing general dynamics. Sorry? You were asking about F-16 aircraft manufacturer, right? Yeah. It's basically general company called general dynamics. Yeah, 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 I agree. Or Lewis, Lewis, Lewis Martin or something like this. Yes. Okay. So now we have this table. This table is the six sigma level uh, DBMO, which is defect per million. So if someone told you, or you have been asked in the exam, they will give you the DBMO and they will ask you for the six sigma level. They will tell you uh, 309, 308. 0.537 defect beer million. This is referred to this is referred to two sigma. And this is we saw it 666,807. Uh, this is referred to three sigma level. When you found, when you calculate uh, the sigma level and you get this one from the, uh, from the calculator, which is a special for six sigma, it will give you immediately three. Sometimes it will give you two point. For example, you will not get the same number. You will get a number in between. So that means you are working on between two and three sigma level. So you are in the middle. Again, you need to restructure. Again, you need to reprocess. And then you need to, to have a new procedure until you get uh, and you reach uh, three. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, 6,210, uh, this is referred to four sigma level, and 233 referred to five, and our beloved one, 3.4, referred to uh, six sigma level. Okay, guys, and this is, we call it uh, defect beer million opportunity. 
This is defect per million opportunity. In each million process you are doing, you have only 3.4 uh, defect or 3.4 error or 3.4 mistake. Okay, guys, and this is the uh, this is the six sigma level. Okay, now we have the law number uh, number three, which is the data uh, management. Okay, here we'll tell you the main the main reason the main reason for the success of your project. Uh, Six Sigma project is the data. Six Sigma project, as we mentioned in the uh, yesterday, depends on the data. So based on the data, all the analysis you will do it is based on the uh, on the data. So collecting the data, this is the main steps you're doing before you start your project. So why we need the data because the Six Sigma project depends on the data. So what you will do is this data. There is a three, uh, 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 three steps you have to follow uh, dealing with the data. You have to collect the data and then you need to organize this data. And in the end, you need to interpret this data. So the interpretation will give you uh, uh, the, the right decision, okay? It will give you indicator which decision you have to take. So if you, if you, if you rely on a wrong data, if you rely on the people, they will collect wrong, wrong data, that means you will take your project far away from the desired result. So you need to take care of who is collecting the data. That means you need to select the correct people uh, in your team. So in, the, in, 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 in this course, we will tell you, and we will have some techniques uh, how to select your team. But in the green belt, you have more, and there is a more choice. And there is a uh, and there is a big survey. You will do it for each member of the team before you select him and point him as a team member. So there is a many process you will go through until you appoint uh, this this man. Because of the first thing you do is collecting the data. Collecting the data it depends on the on the person who is collecting the data. If you choose the wrong person to collect the data, that means you have wrong data. That means you are organizing wrong data. That means you are interpret interpretation for the wrong data. That means you will take your uh, your project to the wrong direction. Instead of going this way, you will go this way. So this is very important law. The law it depends on the data. Why we need the data? Because uh, our project depends on the data. So the first thing we need to collect the data. After your collection of the data, you need to organize it. After you organize it, you need to make the interpretation so you can help you uh, to take your, uh, the right decision. Okay, so number four. Number four, we have the type of the data. Okay. We have two types of data. These two types is split to 12 type of data. Six, we call it continuous data. And six, we call it uh, discrete data. So what is the difference between continuous? What is the difference between discrete? How you will realize and how you will differentiate between both of them? This is very simple. We will give you one, one rule you can follow and you can identify whatever the data uh, you will find. Okay. There is a, some kind of data, okay. When you spill it, it will give you the same meaning. The time. If you ask me how many time you need to reach your office, I told you I need one hour. Yeah. Okay. One hour to reach my office. This is, I told Bali, how many times yeah. you need to reach your office? I told him one hour, okay? Yeah. And then Ahmed, he asked me how many times you need to reach your office? I told him 16 minutes. Is there yeah. any difference? Same. No? Same thing. Same? Yeah. Okay. This is the point here. The difference between the continuous data and discrete data, whenever you spill it, still you have the same meaning. 
Okay? This is what we call it uh, continuous data. The temperature is the same because there is there is a two or three measure for the temperature. When you spill it, it will give you the same. The distance when you spill it, meter, kilometer, whatever, the same. The weight also, uh, km or less, it will give you the same. The height, if I told you meter or centimeter, the same. Price also, if I give you the amount with the dollar and give you the same amount with the real, it is equal, so it's the same. So this is the point, this is the point we want to make here. Where any data you have it, when you spill it to the small, uh, uh, to the small uh, measure, you will have the same, uh, the same meaning. In the other side, the discrete data, you cannot, or if you spell it, spell it to the small part, it will never give you the same meaning, or even you cannot do it, okay? This is a, the data can be broken down into smaller pieces and it still makes sense, okay? Data that can be measured using uh, the same measure or equipment, because when you measure, the distance you will you will you will have the same measure whatever kilometer or whatever meter so you will have the same measure equipment and when you're breaking down the small or small pieces it still makes the sense it is still uh, giving the same meaning in the right uh, in the left hand this cannot be broken down into small pieces it is all non-continuous data non-continuous data means discrete data so Continuous data, any, when you find in your data that you will collect, whenever you found temperature, whenever you found distance, whenever you found weight, height, price, time, immediately you will consider as continuous data. Why you will consider as a continuous data? Why you will consider as a discrete data? Why we need to determine from the first time this is data continuous or this is data discrete? Because when you go later for the green and you want to calculate on the, on the mini tab, if you choose continuous data in order to calculate and analyze discrete data, it will give you a warning. Cannot be because you are using continuous data and use the wrong tool to analyze the continuous data. You have to use the correct tools. So the correct tools for analyzing the data it depends on the, on the data. During this course, later on, we will know more details about this one. Here, just we need to, to give you this basic of understanding and how to differentiate between continuous data and discrete, uh, and discrete data. So here, now we know the temperature, distance, weight, height, price, time, this is the continuous data. And, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, and bionumeric uh, data, this is, uh, uh, we call it discrete. And uh, nominal data also we call it uh, discrete. Count data, discrete. Uh, ordinal data, discrete. Debatable data, discrete. Percentage, discrete. Binomial means, yes, or no, true or false, uh, bus or fail. This is can be broken to small. No, cannot be broken to small. Not like distance and not like uh, height. Uh, count data one, two, three, four cannot be uh, broken to small uh, pieces. If you do, it will not make sense. Nominal data also same like uh, how many how many department you have. We have. For example, HR, we have purchasing, we have finance. This is, we call it nominal data. So this is also cannot be uh, broken to small parts. We have ordinal data also like uh, excellent, very good, uh, medium, poor, because during you collecting the data, you will find some, some type of data. For example, you are taking the feedback from the customer and you ask him about the service. It is excellent or very good or good or, or poor. He will give you, for example, excellent, or he will give you uh, very poor. And then you need uh, to analyze this data 
to get as a result. So getting result means you will take a decision accordingly. So to use the correct, uh, um, uh, to correct uh, equipment or correct uh, data analysis tool, you need to determine which data you are using. Debatable data, the debatable data, uh, by the way, 90% of, of it is isolated. We call it uh, isolated data and 5% is uh, continuous data, which means 5% of the debatable data, okay, can be uh, considered as a continuous. For 90, uh, for 95% of, of it, it's, we call it uh, discrete data. This is a little bit confused, but the rest of it is very clear, okay? We have a percentage. Percentage also uh, considered as discrete data. Okay, guys, so let's have some example. So this, this is a table. So let's have some example. I want to reduce customer service time. What is the type of this data, guys? We mentioned time. Huh. Continuous, good. See, this is a continuous that. Okay, go for the next. I want to reduce percentage of employee turnover. So we mentioned percentage. What is discrete. this data? Discrete. So this is discrete. Good. Okay. I want to reduce the average number of error in the employee performance. We mentioned number. What is this type of data? Discrete. Very good. The guys are working in the chat, uh, by the way. OK. Uh, I want to reduce number of error found. What is this? We mentioned number. That means discrete. Very good. I want to reduce the waste by uh, by kilo. We mentioned kilo. What is this? Continuous. See. Continuous. Continuous. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. So I want to reduce the number of damage uh, brother. We mentioned number. That means B. Mm -hmm. Correct. Discrete. Yes. Discrete. Uh, seven. I want to increase the number of good delivery to the customer. This is. That's great, good. I want to uh, I want to raise my score on the exam. This is number. That's great, very good. So this is the way. This is the type two type of customer. Why we are uh, need to identify which type of customer? Uh, sorry, which type of uh, of data we have in order to choose the correct uh, analyzing tool. Uh, to make the analyze for the, to get the result. And then the result it has been to convert on uh, on right decision. Then you can take your project to the, to the correct uh, direction. Okay. Uh, we have the law number five. We call it uh, central distancy. Central distancy uh, just need uh, your attention, uh, guys. There is a three method we are, calculating the central distance. What means central distance? Means how far or near your data from the, uh, from the center of the data. For example, this is the data. This is the center of the data should be here. And this is the arrow are representing the data. So the data is still far from the from the center of the data. This is, we call it uh, central distancing, which means uh, high the uh, uh, tiniest of the data around the central point, uh, how tiny the data close around the center, means it is near or it is far from the central of the data. Okay, we have a three method to calculate uh, the central uh, distancing. We have the method number one. We have a law called the mean. Okay, guys, the mean is total value divided by the number of the value. So if we need to calculate the mean, the mean is equal to the total value 
okay, divided by the number of the value. So let's have this example. We have a staff performance from Jan to October and uh, uh, employee A get this number, B get this number, C he got this number, B he got this number, E he got this number. So we need to find the mean. Mean, mean he has referred to the, to the average. So the average for, for, for this uh, data, you need to get the average. Which one is good, which one is bad? And you, get, uh, you, you, you need to calculate it. So you can find the, the, the average, the average it will give you the indication of how far or near the data from the, from the center. So according to the, uh, to, the, to the law, the total number of this uh, value or the total, total value divided by the uh, number of the value. So the total of this number we have, it is 30. And how many numbers we have? One, two, three, five. four, five. We have five. So that means our average is six. So now you know the average. You can, you can tell this guy is poor. And this guy is very good. This guy also good. This guy is uh, poor because less. So this guy in the average. So this is this is what you use the mean. So I need to show you some in the Excel. The same example, but we need to walk a little bit in the Excel. <clears throat> I'm opening the Excel. Okay, what is the mean? We have the mean. Okay, this is this is guys. This is the same uh, sample or another one. We will we will take right now. If you have this number and we need to take, uh, we need to take the mean, the mean for this uh, sample. Okay, the the law is total value. Calculate the total value divided by the number of the value. The number of the value we have five. And the total of this value is 88, uh, 880, and the number is five. And this, this is a, this is the mean, because the second one we have the median. Median means also different. So this is this is the calculation. It will give you the uh, the mean. Okay. Okay. Let us get. This is another example of the mean. So the same the same sample. This is will tell you, uh, you cannot rely on the mean for all the time. Okay, because we have, we have another, another, another law, we can use it. If the mean is give you two type of, uh, of, uh, of data or two type of result, which one you will choose? So this is a sample before we took it. Okay, but if you, if you see the data, it's very far from the from the center, and here is the same, but different different number. The same employees, okay, but this is another group. This is a group one, and this is a group two. This is a score for the group one, and this is a score for the group two. But here we found the 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 data is very near to the center, so it's the same. We apply the same law on the group one and the same law in the group two, but we found that, so this, by, by the way, this is, we will get it from, uh, from, 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 from one, uh, one tool, you will use it to get this, uh, this result. After you, you enter the data in the, in the, in the tools, it give you this result. So you have the group one and the group two give you the same average. Which one you will choose? Which one you will consider? Which one you will take it with you for the next step? So definitely, definitely in in the in, in six sigma level, in six sigma, 
Yes, exactly. We will take the group P. So in six sigma, they will tell you if you have used the mean, and the mean is give you the different uh, different result. Here is the rule. You will take which one is near to the central of the data. Okay, guys. Here, the 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 variation or the distancy, uh, the central distancy uh, low. They will tell you if you are using the first method, which is the mean, and you have two different results coming out from applying the mean, you have to choose the when it's near to the to the data. So this is it will help you more and it will give you a uh, right decision. It will help you to take uh, the right uh, decision. So the group of B, we will take the group of P because uh, dispersion and spread of data, that information is close to the center. It is very near and close to the center, meaning there is a small variation ratio. And this is, we will know it by details uh, in, in, this, in this course, what means by ratio. This is the variation. The variation means far or near uh, your data from the, from the center. So it's here is telling you, you need a way to quantify the spread of that. This is will lead us to the to the next uh, law. But let us take this this sample for the lake. There is a one lake. Uh, this lake with uh, two type of uh, or three three areas. Uh, where is the uh, the water uh, the water height? So if if you are want to jump in this water and you're, uh, you are not good uh, in the swim. And the water is uh, one, uh, 176 centimeter deep and you are 180 centimeter tall, okay? So will you jump in this lake or not? If you depends on mean, maybe you will jump here. So you will be safe, but you doesn't know the correct the correct data. We doesn't know where exactly this 170, uh, 170 centimeter uh, exists. It is exist here or here or here. You doesn't know. You just calculate and get the uh, and get the average, okay? And then you get average by 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 calculating the mean and you jump here. So if you jump here, you will die. If you jump here, you will die. If you jump here, you will be safe because you are 80, 180. If you jump here, you are safe also. So this is tell us you cannot depend on the mean, you cannot depend on the average in all the decision you will take. You will calculate, you will use the mean, you will use the average that coming from the mean, but don't rely on the mean for the whole of the time. If you, the mean give you two, uh, two, uh, uh, two results for one, one, one type of data, you have to use which is the most near and most uh, close to the, to the center. Okay, guys, let us move to the method number two. In method number two, we call it the median. We have the mean, and now we have the median. The median is uh, represent the middle value, okay? Mean is uh, represent the average. This is one question will be in the exam. Mean, the mean represent the average. The median, median, N, N guys, not M, okay? Median, not medium. So median, represent the middle value. So there is a total difference between middle value and the average. So this is uh, one, uh, uh, something called perfect about six sigma. If you, if you, if you know it, there is a little uh, semi, uh, what we call it, uh, they can be uh, together, or you give you the same, the same meaning, middle value and the average value. But in the six sigma, I'll tell you no, this is a totally different. The middle value we are using the median, 
and the average we are using the mean. So the law of the mean is n plus one divided by two. N is the total count of numbers. Okay, N is the total count of number. And let us see the example so it can be uh, more easy for us. Okay, we have these numbers, this number of the, of the lake, what we saw uh, right now. Okay, we need to find uh, the mean for this or to the middle value for, uh, for this lake or for this data, what we have, what we have get from the, uh, from the collecting data. Okay. The law is, is, is telling you that N plus one, what is N? N is the total of, of the numbers. Okay. N means the total of the number. The total of the number, what we have is five. One, one, two, three, four, five. Total number of the data we have is five. The law is saying n is five. Five plus one, six. Divided by two, it will give you three. Where is the where is the median here? The median here is one hundred. So one hundred here is considered as a mean. This is the median. The median is one hundred. This is if you have a six number. Uh, but if you have odd number like this, how you will do it? Uh, someone is asking again, please. Okay, we have we have the law of the mean of the median. Okay, this is the law of the median. The median is telling you the law is n plus one divided by two. Okay, the median is representative representative the middle value. So we need to calculate the middle value for the data that you have. We have a data here from five number of the data. Okay, this is the data we have. How many data we have? We have five. We can have more than 3,000. This is only one example. But in the real life, you have, we have thousands. So you need to calculate and get the median. The median, what is the median? We need the middle value. What is the middle value on this number? So in order to get the middle value of this number, you need to use the median law. The median law is telling you median equal n plus one divided by two. n is the number of the data. How many data here we have? One, two, three, four, five. This is the number of the data. We have five, okay? So we get n, just as calculate. This is n plus one, n plus one equal six. Okay, okay, we get the six up to here. This is between two brackets, we get it. And now the result from these two brackets, you will divide it by two. What is the result we get? We get six divided by two, it will give us three. This is the median value. Median value, where is the number? Uh, where is the, uh, in the ranking, when you calculate, where is the number three? One, two, three, here. This is our mean. This is the median of this value. If you need to calculate the median of this value, this is the number, 100. 100 is become in the middle of this value. You have here one, two, you have here one, two, and 100 in the middle, this is the middle value. But if you have uh, what we call it odd number, Okay, you have uh, brother. Yes, brother. For example, you have told the answer is three from top uh, first yes, one is top. ten, second one is uh, sixty, third one is hundred. That's why we are selecting three. Correct. Yeah. You For example, if the answer is four, we select one ninety. Masalan. Four. Correct? If you have four, it will come here. Come here, I will show you. You have four. If you yeah, have this, this is you even. Have, yeah, if even you have, if you have, for example, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, there is no middle, correct? Yeah, this even, even, yeah. Yes, okay. There is no something in the middle. So how we'll calculate it? This is the next example. They will tell you, if you have this number, you have a six. Okay, if we apply the, apply the law, we have a six, six this is the N. Six plus one equal seven, correct guys? 
Six plus one equals seven. So when you divide seven by two equal. Three and up. Seven divided to two. It will give 3. you 3.5. 3. Where is the 3.5 here? We don't have 3.5. Correct? So yes. which one is 3.5? 3.5 means the number, guys. Not, not here, not this number, not 100 or 191. The, the, the ranking, the sequence number, this number, number 3.4.5 should be the, the median. But we don't have here 3.5 because you have only number either 3 or 4. Mother, you mean you mean the value of data doesn't matter, but the number of data. Yes, the number of data. Yes, okay. The value okay. doesn't, doesn't yes. matter. Yes. The number of data, it will lead you to the value of the data. Okay. Here we have the three. Three means in the sequence, where is the number three? Number three is 100. This is your median. Okay. Here we calculate seven, three point. We don't have any, any in the ranking, we don't have any sequence. 3.5. That means we will take it between 100 and nine, yes, between 190 exactly. and that 100. means in between 100 and one and 190. So in this case, they will tell you we have to use the mean. The mean we have it in the Excel. If you said equal mean, okay, or uh, sorry, the median. Okay, you choose the median. Where is the where is the data you need to take? No, so in this case, in this case, what he has done is take hundred right. plus one ninety divided by two. Yes. So that we will take the, we will take the median for you get it you get it from the low three point five. That means this one and this one. It, it that means your median between the number four uh, number three and number four. Yeah. So when you use. so you calculate number three yes. hundred plus one ninety. So, Yes. That is so, uh, 290 divided by 2, you will arrive at 145. Exactly. So instead of wasting your time calculating, you have in the in the Excel, we have the mean. We will take it for the whole of data to give you the mean. The mean is 145. 145 where between one with 100 and 190. This is what we call it the mean. Add both and divide by 2. Yeah. Divide by 2, it gives you 3.4. 3.4, this is the sequence number. Where is the number? The number it should be here. For example, if we said this is, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So they will tell you, according to this, your median is between three and four. Yeah. Between three and four. That means the value is between 100 and 190. So in order to calculate it, yeah, either to calculate it by the law using this one or go direct in the Excel, just equal median, you will find it. Click here, choose the data, whatever you have, 1,000, 3,000, enter, it will give you the, the median. That means median 145. You are playing with uh, between 100 and one and 190. Okay, guys, clear? Yeah. Yes. Okay. We'll go for the next. What we have. Okay. When we use the mean and we will use the median. If the numerical number value is coming close to the data, you will use the mean. If there is an uh, anonymous data from the result of the data outside, uh, the range of uh, prob uh, probability, probability, so the data, the set. Forget about this one. If the data is near to the center, calculating by the mean or the median, data is near to the center, you will take whatever is near to the center. Okay, guys, this is the main uh, concept what we need to have or we need to go uh, out from these slides. When you are calculating the central distance, the law of the central distance, we said there is a three way of using the central distance. We have the mean, we have the median, and also we will have the mode. So which one you will use? You will use whatever is near uh, to the data. 
it will uh, the, the near to the sorry uh, the the near to the the result that came out after after your calculation it is come near to the central of the data this is the one you will take it with you for the next uh, steps okay guys so number three or the method uh, method number three we have the mode we call it the mode and mode is very easy uh, no need even to go for the excel mode means there is coming uh, more frequently the most frequent value uh, more frequent number repeated number this is your mean uh, sorry this is your mode this is if you want to calculate the mode so if you get this example this is the data just when you need to you need to sort the data from top to the down or from down to the top it is up to you and by eyes or by using the excel you can get the mode here by eyes you found there is the number 19 is most frequent and most repeated this is your this is your mode uh, let us go for the mode little bit okay this is the mode and there is uh, also in the excel if i want to calculate the mode for this number forget about uh, 19 here by eyes you can because this is a, this is a little bit example for eyes you can identify but if you have in the real life you have more than 1,000, more than 2,000, 3,000 uh, data. You cannot find which is the mode. So basically good mode, choose all the data, press enter. It will give you what, what is the mode. No, sorry. Go for the whole of the data. Yes. Mod by the E equal mod the last one, this one with the E. Okay. We give you the mod. This is 19. If you have a continuous that more than 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, you cannot find it by eyes. Just you need to use the, the, uh, the mod from the Excel and you can get it immediately. Okay, guys, let's go forward. We have uh, number six, uh, something not clear. If you have two or three, um, three, two or three similar value. See, the mode is about which, which one is, which one is uh, more frequent or which one is repeated more. By your eyes here, you can identify. But if you have 3,000, 10,000, uh, items you cannot find it and at that time you need to use the mode uh, in the excel you can find it uh, easily if you have one or two or three by, by eyes you can identify okay so let's go for the uh, number six number six we have the measure of spread of data we have something called uh, the range or the variation if you see the variation, I told you before uh, yesterday in the beginning of our uh, of our uh, session, I told you there is a variation and there is a law for variation. We call it the range. Okay, uh, range is the amount by which uh, observation of the data in a sample in a population different about the mean and the range. Um, the rate uh, about uh, about their meaning in the name of range or variation. So the observation of the sample sample we will later on we will we will uh, we will have more idea about what is the sample and what is the population. Sample when you take sample from your data, for example, you have one uh, one hundred data. You cannot apply your project on one hundred data uh, analyzing one hundred. So 100, it will take more days, days convert to time, time convert to money. So you cannot take it. So you will take just a sample. Same like when you're going for the, uh, for the blood test, they will not take your whole blood. They will take sample from your blood and they will analyze. So here the same concept. We will not take the same, uh, I mean, the, the, 
the total uh, data, but we will take sample from the data, and this is we call it sample. Or in the some uh, cases, you will take only uh, the whole of the data, what we call it uh, the population. Okay, the range is based on uh, two extreme observation, maximum and minimum. So it's very easy if you want to, cal to calculate the range. The range is equal maximum minus the uh, the minimum okay uh, let us go for the excel this is the range okay you need to calculate what is the maximum here for this data and then you need to calculate what is the minimum number of this data and then you will get your your range that means your range uh, uh, between uh, 97 uh, we will go, okay, uh, okay let us take it. Uh, what is the maximum for this? 100. So what is the minimum? Three. The minimum is the three, should be three. Okay. What is the law is telling you? It's telling you the range is equal the max, okay, minus the minimum. It will give you the range. This is, this is the range. This is very simple, guys. So the range is about the max and minimum uh, from the data. Whatever the data you have, if you want to calculate and get uh, the range, the range is equal maximum value minus the minimum value. It will give you the range. For example, we have here from three to, uh, to nine. So nine minus three, it will give you six. So this is six, we call it the range, okay? Maximum plus minus uh, plus minimum, it will give you the range. Uh, the range is six. What means six? Means six is the central of your data. So your data is far or near to the central. Uh, this, is, this is calculated and this is, we use it, the range. Uh, also we have, uh, uh, we use the mean, and median and mode for the central distance, but for the measure of, of the spread of the data, so your data is, is, is far from the center or near to the center, you can use the, you can use the range. Okay, clear guys? This is about the data. This is about the range. What we call it, this is the central of your data. Whenever your data is near to the center, you will take it. But if your data is, or the result come from, uh, it came from after analyzing the data is far from the center, so you will keep it, you will not take it. This is what we means by the spread of the data. Okay, guys, we have the last one. We call it the standard uh, deviation. Don't bother yourself with this. Uh, N plus minus X is very simple. Very simple, how to find the standard deviation and in the excel we have the standard deviation in the excel for example you have this data okay and you need to calculate the standard deviation so it's the same that like the mean or the average we have it in the excel yes you need to use stdv stdv it will give you the standard deviation of the data equal stdv we have here, if you if you if you notice, we have STDVB and STDVBS. S for the sample. This is just we give you idea, but later we will go in details. When you are using sample of the data, when you are analyzing sample of the data, you will use STDVS. When you are analyzing the whole of the data, you will use STDVP. Uh, but here you will, you will take this one without P, without S, because we are not uh, in the real. So this number is very important number. This is one, but it will use it on the mini tab. Okay. You will take this number, enter it to the mini tab. It will give you the result. According to the result, you will take your uh, decision. Okay, guys. I'm done. I know this is 
this is this is for the first time uh, the information is too uh, is too big and there is a uh, uh, some uh, them, uh, I mean like uh, each one is near to the to the other one but during the course again we will talk uh, we will talk about each one individual and we'll use it in the calculation and uh, we will use it in the green belt more than we will use it in the, in the world. So if you have any question, I took one hour or more? Almost one hour and a half. One and a half? Almost 10 minutes. That's okay, good. So uh, tomorrow we'll take, we'll take uh, only half an hour. Brother? Yes. Whatever uh, training you gave, uh, Alhamdulillah, it, uh, it was very nice. Okay. So, can we get a soft copy of whatever was Yeah, sure, sure. So, in the end of any session, because this is, uh, as I told you, it is supposed to be three hour or four hour one time. So, this is mm -hmm. the whole uh, slides about one lecture. Mm -hmm. But we divide it to two. Once I finish two, I will send you uh, copy of this. No, the thing is, if you send it by daily, whatever it's covered, it will be easy for us to understand it uh, okay. later in the evening. Okay, like that. no issue. No is. By daily, and whatever you have taught for the day, if you send uh, okay. the same thing, it will be better. Yeah. Okay, no issue. Uh, check no with issue. other guys also. I, I'm just telling you what I eat. Okay, no issue. I will send it right now. Exactly, uh, share. From tomorrow, I will I will spill it to whatever. Where is the slide we, we, we end off? We will, I will send it up to them. Jazakallah khair, Jazakallah khair. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you, brother. Yeah, hello. Tomorrow we are having 6 p.m. Sorry? Tomorrow we are having 10 p.m. 12 o'clock? Yeah, the same time. Call it, please. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thanks, brother. Okay.